Hey, hey, everybody. Glenn Hausman here from uh, No Vacancy Live. Coming at you live from the end of the Hunter Hotels Investment Conference. And I'm sitting with myself right now, Mr. David Pepper, Chief Development Officer over at Choice Hotels International. David, so great to see you, my friend. Great to see you, Glenn, yeah. as always. Now, all right, Anthony will be coming along. We think at some point, I don't know what's going on. I'm here in, uh, I'm here in Atlanta. I'm at this event. I'm having a great time. Who knows what he is up to? But we don't need him right now because we're going to talk a lot about what's going on. David, um, before we get into the whole choice thing, I think it's really important to talk about how symbolic I think that this was, right? Now, just for you guys know, David and I are across from each other. So if we're not looking directly at you in the camera, it's because we need to make eye contact with each other. Because, David, I miss making eye contact with uh, people in person. I eye contact. You know, I finally got my hair done. I got it all <laughs> set up for you today. You made me put this thing on my head. That's right. Uh, I'm not even looking at, at, at the camera. That's all. It's great. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. So I don't know about you, but I really felt like how amazing was this, that we're finally back. We're finally making things happen again. But more importantly, I felt like the first day, kind of like a family reunion. It was. It was. And, and – you know, it's funny. I'm on the advisory board here for the Hunter Conference. Mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, there was 350 people signed up. That's it? Just That's it. 350 people. This week, 1,100. That's amazing. So right? it really shows you what's happening out there in the world. People want to get out. They want to see people. Uh, yep. You know, the people are always talking about, oh, business travel is not happening. It's not going to come back. It's coming back. Yeah. Right? And, and it's just like this. It's great to see you. Mm -hmm. It's great to see everybody. Uh, there was a lot of hugs. Oh my God, was there a lot of hugs? I have not had this much human contact in 14, 15 months. It was yeah. really weird. I think like uh, speaking about the hugs, it's like at first everybody was trying to suss each other out. How do yeah. we feel? What's going to happen? And then I don't know if it was in combined with the cocktails coming out or something. I, I, but I, I think they got done with the fist bumps. I got done with right. the elbow bumps. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, you know, what? I'm vaccinated. I, I think it's the new welcome. Now is I'm vaccinated. How about you? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know I'm double vax. I'm pretty excited. You right. you too. Double vax. Double vax. Feel great. The family's uh, you know my wife's vax. You know we're finally out and yep. out actually getting the restaurants again. Yeah. It's fantastic. I know it really is fantastic. All right. So definitely the first night felt like a family reunion and it was really strange. But everyone was eating food and beverages, so the masks started coming off. And let me just underscore the important fact that. Again, the Hunter Investment Conference partnered with Clear for their health pass. So everyone that was here was pre-selected. So it's not like we were being all willy-nilly and taking risks. And I think it was important to take those baby steps here. And, you know, I think the health pass really helped set that level of confidence for people. Yeah, it did. You know, you, you felt like everyone, uh, you know, took the time to make sure they, they filled out their form. They, uh, you know, you kind of figured out that a lot of people probably were vaccinated. Uh, and you felt a little bit safer right. walking in. So yeah. you felt comfortable. Exactly. All right. So what was it like for you walking in here? What were your first impressions? Were you anxious before getting here? How did it feel? You know, look, it, we're seeing business come back already. Yeah. You know, and so we're already promised. So I expected a lot of people to come here and be a little bit more optimistic. Right. Uh, and that's kind of the feeling I've gotten from everybody is, you know, like it, it's it's almost another welcome is, hey, you got through it. We're right. on the other side. Yeah. Uh, and it feels a little, it feels great. It feels a little bit. Um, someone was going to some restaurant last night. It was called The Optimist. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's it's you feel that that hope. Uh, you feel like we got to the other side. Things are getting better. Um, and so it's, it's a real happy environment. Yeah, it really was. So, uh, Adele, uh, could you bring out that comment again, Suzanne, real quick? I, I want to read. Uh, I, I want to read that. Eleven hundred. Oops, sorry. Sorry, Suzanne. Eleven hundred people um, really makes me feel so optimistic about the quick ramp up of meetings and um, business travel. Excellent. This was excellent, and I'll tell you, I talked to uh, Jeff Higley, our friend that runs the Alice Conference. I spoke to Harry Javer, who runs the Lodging Conference, of course. They're both empowered. They're both feeling excited, and they're seeing people signing up now, sponsors coming back. It, dare I say, it's starting to feel pretty normal. Glenn, I don't know about you. I've got 10 trips already on the books. Wow. That's, that are coming up. Wow. So it's, you're right. Everybody wants to see each other. Uh, people are getting out. I don't know about you, but my plane was full. Yep, same here. Uh, you know, it's 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 really interesting. Hopefully, this gas issue won't be a problem. Oh my God! Uh, you know, I, I know people are having it, but hopefully, we'll get through this. Uh, yeah, uh, my wife keeps telling me I have plenty of issues with uh, gas, but that's for a different show. <laughs> Tune into Friday Night Audit where we joke around a lot more. Friday nights at uh, 5 p.m. But all right, David. Um, I, I said I use the word normal, and honestly, first day family reunion yesterday, it just felt normal. Yeah, yeah, it right. did. Look, there's still little things. You're right. Uh, you know, the, the conference is being smart. Uh, the hotel is being smart. You still have the individual packages for lunches or, mm -hmm. or, or, or certain things. But 
I like there was a buffet. Yeah. At one point last night. There was, and they just served you. Right, and they mm -hmm. just served you, and there was the screens up. So, so things are still in place. It still is a little different, but it did feel normal. I actually kind of like the uh, the pre-done salads. You could just take the box and go. It's much easier. I don't have to embarrass myself managing the tongs. Right. <laughs> you know? so, so some things are so some things are good. Uh, sometimes it's a little very different. But, yeah, but it's it still it's it still feels great. Right, it it sure does. So then that just takes us into the bridge of. Feels great to be here. I'm for me personally, it was great because I've got some business opportunities that I think are going to be coming out of this. That's why we didn't do the show, guys, yesterday. I felt it was really important to catch up with everyone, network with everyone, make sure they knew after over a year being away from each other, we're here, we're ready to do business, we're ready to make things happen. Um, I'm not so sure. At least you know I got some business done, but overall, people are saying it wasn't necessarily business that had to get done. It was more about getting over this hump to get back to normalcy. How did you feel about it, and were you able to do both? Uh, honestly, it started off with great to see a bunch of people that you hadn't seen in a while, but we got down to business. Yeah, and It's a typical Hunter conference. I sit in a meeting room the entire day, and mm -hmm. every hour a new client comes in, and we talk, we talk deals. Yeah, uh, And so deals are back. You know, People are looking for projects. That, you know, Financing's opening up a little bit. So you're starting to see people looking for deals. Yeah, it's that's fun. great. So uh, being chief development officer, now we've got a lot of pros that are on the show, but you also have some folks that are new to the business and are really at the property level working their way up, right? We're preaching what a great career opportunity is right now to be in hotels. What does a chief development officer do? I'm going to pretend I don't know for a minute or two. Uh, I just sit around and watch people do things. No, it, it's, it, look, we are not lying. <laughs> Look, a choice hotels. We have seven thousand hotels. Right. Uh, you, you know, you didn't get the seven thousand with just sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I run a, a franchise sales team that uh, half, you know, half my group they go out, they look for hotels that are looking for a new brand uh, or an independent hotel looking for a brand, and and uh, my group goes out and signs them up and signs them to a franchise agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, or also, someone's looking to build a hotel, uh, and we work with developers to find sites, find markets. Uh, and then we sell them the franchise, and they get the prototype drawings, they get the reservation mm -hmm. system, the marketing, uh, and so we're out there selling franchise. But it's also much more than that. It's about um, creating long-lasting relationships. I mean, you've been in this business, um, I think, a little bit longer than I have. I've yes. been in 25-plus years. I hit 30 years in March. Wow. 30 years in March. And it was so, someone asked me the question that said, what has changed in development over the 30 years? Um, and I said, I'll tell you what hasn't. Right. Relationships. Yep. It's still, no matter what it is, I mean, Glenn, I've known you for a long time, long time and it yeah. will always be like, you know, someone needs somebody for a conference, someone call, call yeah. Glenn. Uh, it's because we know each other. Yeah. Uh, and it's That's the same right. thing. It, it's, it's, it's that trust factor. Uh, look, franchise agreements are for 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, That's a long last, time. They last longer than a couple of marriages, I know. Yeah. And so it, it's, <laughs> More uh, than a couple that you know. <laughs> so it, it is, it is a, it, it's a friendship, it's a relationship, and it's a trust factor. And, and, and so it, it's... It, this whole business is all about relationships. Right. Yeah, it, it absolutely uh, is. So you've got, you know, you've got a lot of brands. You're out there. What was this last year like for you? Just I don't want to dwell in bleh. I really want to focus on going forward and how positive things are. But let's set the stage a little bit from where we were then to, you know, sure. codify where we are now. Look, look, last year still, we still sold over 400 franchises last year. Um, that's a, that sounds like a huge number, but the what year was before, it the year before? The year before was 700 and Right, five. Right. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. it was significantly down, but still 400 franchises. When still. you consider, pretty much everything came to a halt for months, for months right at the onset, I, right? Right. right. And, and so, look, we were very focused on our franchisees first. Mm -hmm. will, let, let's let's get our franchisees through this thing. Uh, but business was still, people were looking for help. Uh, and look, choice is very leisurely skewed mm -hmm. uh, with our yeah. guests. And so, what, what the only business that was out there last year and lot of this year still is leisure focused. Right. So people mm -hmm. needed help. Right. So they were still yeah. coming to us. The other thing too, Glenn, is 25% of those franchises sold mm -hmm. were extended stay. Yeah. Well, that doesn't surprise me no. at all. <laughs> and um, I remember at uh, Alice 2020, you were, uh, you were talking a brand new, uh, brand new extended stay the, the, the product. 2021, uh, 2020, you're right. Wasn't that a great time to launch a new construction it, brand? It, actually, it, it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the world didn't come to an end <laughs> and all like that. But, uh, uh, you know, you were there. You were at the. You're, you're really following that momentum. I know some other brands that are now trying to get into it, but at least you had the product there. And I just did a video on on that recently, so you can check that under our No Vacancy News Today feed if you want to catch that. But we're going to talk a little bit about that now. How do you feel now 
over a year later that you made that move back in 2020. I, I, I got to tell you, it was, I, I can't believe how smart we were. <laughs> yeah. It's making us look smart. Uh, look, we really proved out, and, and not just us, but the segment really proved out Extended Stay works. Yep. Uh, and look, we're already outperforming 2019 with our Extended Stay brands. Yeah, of course you are. So, so, so it really did prove out, and now people want the, you know, they want a bigger room. They want the uh, ability to heat things up back at their room. Yeah. David, uh, I've been food. preaching this for over a decade, yeah. man. And, and, and yeah. really, no one had launched a brand in the mid-scale summit. We're talking about Everhome. So right, of course. Like, yeah, sorry uh, about that. Uh, um, but, I, I want everybody to know that um, ramping up for this conference and going through the conference has been – I've never been more tired at a conference by n drinking as little as I have and going to bed at as reasonable hours I have. I've seen a lot of hungover faces around here. Actually, it's, but, right? It's almost like – it's almost kind of like we're all pros. We've done this a gajillion times, right? But it almost feels like one of your brand conferences where the GMs are unleashed for one night and they make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, right? it's, I, mean, I know everyone has been drinking during COVID, yeah. but I don't, they haven't been convention like, drinking. You no. Know, this is a totally different <laughs> animal. I tried to stay away from that, yet I'm still tired, yet I'm forgetting names. So tell us a little more about uh, Everhome. Ever, Ever home suite. So, so it was literally, it's the first mid-scale extended state brand that's been launched in over a decade. That's crazy. So, so no, one's, no one's really tapping into the space. And so, uh, look, we've, we've shown Wood Spring Suites, our economy yep. extended state, is performing so well, you know, around 80% occupancy as a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and no one has gone for that a little bit higher of a rate. And, mm -hmm. and there's still, there's so much of that extended state hotels. We found out a lot of our, those mid-scale extended state uh, guests mm -hmm. were staying at our comfort inn. Uh, right. So let's let's get the product right. And right. so we launched Everhome Suites. Now, it, 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 look, developers have seen how well Extended Stay has performed. Mm -hmm. Lenders mm -hmm. have seen how well mm -hmm. it's performed. So now right. everybody's really, we've got a lot of interest. Uh, we had a dinner last night with 20 people. All Did you? Yeah, 20 people interested in, in, wow. in Everhome and in, uh, in, uh, Woodspring. I just want to point out it should have been 21, but I didn't get an invite. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm just kidding. I Honestly, I can't handle those kinds of dinners at all because I always get stuck next to the wrong person. And I have to like be engaged for three hours, and it's exhausting. Uh, you can talk to anybody. I know, but I really – honestly, my routine for conferences, I really just like going from event to event to event. I've mastered the uh, – in and out conversation, yeah, that, that you know, you, nice, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Everhome's going to do really well, I think, going forward. But we're really almost, I've been calling it this last year, this great reset, a, re a chance to reevaluate absolutely everything we do. Nothing is sacrosanct anymore. All the rules are off. Whatever kind of cliches that you want to say about this. I have a feeling that you're going to be learning some lessons from the extended stay world and being able to apply some of those philosophies, potentially, to some of your other brands. Am I right about no, that? No, no, you absolutely are. Look, we were very, very focused, even before this pandemic hit, mm -hmm. was how do we lower the co total cost of ownership for the owners? It has gotten very, very expensive for owners to operate hotels. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got your our OTA partners. Yeah. There's, there's commissions. There's keyword buys. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. you know? And so we were looking, how do, we, how do we lower the cost for our owners? Right. And one of the things the pandemic did do uh, which was one of the ideas we were working on was, uh, you know, housekeeping on demand. Right. Right. If you're staying in a hotel for three or four days, you've got, look at all your technology here. Do you really <laughs> want someone in your room? David, I don't. And honestly, this is one of those trends. I've been, I've said this before that we're in, in you know, in infancy prior to the pandemic. There's nothing brand new necessarily that's going to come out of this. It's all about accelerating trends. We're there. Exactly. When I'm at my events, anecdotally, my crew that I go around with at all of these conferences, nobody wants anybody nobody, in their room. Nobody, right. So you have your technology. And then second, now with the pandemic, you know it was cleaned. You mm -hmm. don't want anybody else in that Yeah, room, right. right. So now you got this housekeeping on demand. That should hopefully lower some labor costs, mm -hmm. lower even cleaning costs. Mm -hmm. right? If you're not washing sheets every day or you're not – that's that, right. That was from extended stay. You know, those hotels, right. you only clean the room once every week, or once every two weeks. Right. And it's so, right. So I, I'm just going to be very straightforward with figuring out the numbers, um, not the numbers numbers, but um, you don't have to pay someone to clean the room. You don't have to pay for the chemicals to wash the sheet. You get it then for every time you don't wash that sheet, it can be washed one more time in the future, extending the longevity of that right. product. Environmental. And right. And you're finally doing it in a way that appeals to the consumers as opposed to how some brands made missteps to make it feel like you were taking away as opposed to adding two. Exactly. Right. So here's a great opportunity to, to save some costs. Mm -hmm. There's one. And what uh, you and I have discussed this before. Yeah. Breakfast. Yeah. Breakfast, right? These are extended stay guests. They don't want to have breakfast, right? right? They're either cooking it themselves or they're going out. You mm -hmm. know, look, and we talked about this before. When, when I started 30 years ago, I sold Holiday Express. 
It was a muffin and coffee. That's right. <laughs> I've done a lot of crazy muffin coffee toss right. in the last couple of days. Right. It was yeah. a muffin and coffee. Now it's 30 items. You got hot items. You got cold items. Now with, with, with this pandemic, people don't want the buffets. Right. Right. They mm-hmm. want to individually wrap maybe a, a breakfast sandwich, maybe a yogurt. That's really kind of it. So maybe we have some opportunities here to really kind of lower the whole breakfast. I hope as well. so. My biggest fear is, you know, and uh, so everybody knows owners really would like to reduce the cost of breakfast. It's really been very onerous on them as all the brands have kind of had breakfast wars, everybody it's, adding and adding and adding. It's the worst place, place of amenity creep I've seen. It, it, it has. I mean, look, if you drive down I-95 and look at the uh, all the billboards for mm-hmm. hotels, what does it say? Hot breakfast. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's changed from, you know, we have a great room. You know, clean, right. clean bed. Right. Uh, so, yeah, this breakfast world has gone a little bit too far, uh, mm-hmm. and this is an opportunity to pull back on it. Look, we, these owners, they're saving forty, fifty thousand dollars right by not doing breakfast right now. I mean, this is a huge savings for the owners. It could really create some real, you know, profit wow. for them. Right. Yeah. And um, also, uh, our producer Stan is saying behind the scenes, also less demand on the front office team. Right. I mean, the extended stay model is great. I don't know exactly how many people your the ever home is designed for, but it's, it's like like what one third or something. So, so like in a, in a Wood Spring Suites, uh, the amount of FTDs are about six. Yeah. Right. That's ridiculous. Six. Yeah. Uh, to operate the asset, you know, the Wood Spring, uh, the the um, the Everhome model will probably be you know, around 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it's a lot less to, to, to operate these things. And you're right. You yeah. don't have a breakfast attendant. Right. You have someone c- cleaning and, and uh, or co- you know heating mm-hmm. things up. Uh, plus, also, the space can be a lot smaller. Yep. Uh, so it, 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 there's real opportunities there. Not only to think about it, if you can, uh, you know, the development cost, if we can change our prototype and make it a little bit smaller mm-hmm. for some of these spaces as well. Yeah. Another opportunity for, for returns. Uh, so um, we'll, we'll get to a new prototype in just a minute, but I do want to stick with the you, you only introduced Everhome like a year ago. Are you already learning lessons that could be applied to new models? Yes. Uh, so we well, actually, we, we just built a model room. It's in Wichita, Kansas, if you want to cool. go see it. Uh, uh, well, well, that makes sense because that's where Woodspring originally came that's from, where, which is originally called Value Place, created by the late, great uh, Jack DeVore. So interesting that you, you're building it out. Out there. Right, so we built it out there. Uh, there's a, a, a great facility for filament that's out there, uh, and we built it. We've already learned, you know, the spacing in the room. We took, so cool. some, we took out We took out seventy five hundred dollars out of the room. Wow! Uh, so just there, we, we've already learned. So now we've got to get them open. Uh, we've already got people signing up these area agreements where they want to build. Uh, multiple okay. ever homes and so right oh and just in case anybody doesn't know FTE is a full-time employee sorry about that. right no no not your fault I'm usually I'm usually good at doing all of the defining things uh, not today I'm like I'm just I've got this happy it's hangover it's, it's, from it's being here conference. yeah right but not just the end of the conference I'm actually just so um imbued with such excitement about being here that um you know that we're, we're missing some little things but that's okay everybody all right so are you're selling ever homes uh, ever homes are definitely uh a, a lot of people signed up already to uh to go out and build these ever homes and what we did we sold these master development agreements mm-hmm. where like you know we'll sell like los angeles so if someone owns la they'll go out and build you know 10 hotels and Three or three years or so, right? Uh, but they own the, the rights to it, so we're not just selling this individual. We're not typically just selling this individual. That's interesting. Uh, 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 hotels. Well, I hope that franchise. works for you. Fingers crossed. But I mean, based on the Wood Spring, um, from what I knew about them prior to your acquisition, they were just making boatloads of money for people. Confident they still are. Now that you've put all your systems behind it, they're probably even more profitable. But what I liked about that brand was it was a lot of people that weren't traditional hotel developers had gotten in. That's got to help you for opening up new people to get into other brands such as Comfort, which you just came out with a brand new prototype. Bad ass move, man. Yes. The first new prototype post pandemic. When that happened, I was like, Confidence is back. Things are back, right? Yeah. So we spent the last, you know, after the last recession, we we spent a lot of money uh, and a lot of effort on on uh, reimaging Comfort. Mm-hmm. Really brought that brand back, right? Uh, you know, we removed over 600 hotels Woo. from the Comfort system, uh, and we're back out, you know, and going back and replacing. We really cleaned up the brand, and also we invested in our franchisees to do product improvement plans to fix up their assets, to do right. renovations. It's the only time you ever heard of a franchisor actually investing in the franchisee. To help them uh, improve their product. Yeah. So we did that. We cleaned up the system. Now we're back growing again. Uh, you saw our, we just announced our earnings last mm-hmm. week. You're now seeing comfort is growing again. We need a new prototype. 
Yeah, uh, and it's a great new prototype. I don't know how we were so smart enough. We we, we were about to we were going to launch this uh, a little while ago, but you know, right. pandemic thing. Yeah, totally. But, but we did actually launch like the lobby actually has an indoor outdoor space. Yes, and everybody's looking for that outdoor space now. They but they were before oh, they, too to bring it back more. to the point accelerating the trends we're just going to see more of that yeah. it's amazing it took hotels so long to catch on to the fact that we all actually want to be inside and, and outside and, and it looks great from the outside too it's not just you know typical hotel where you know you have a car that's pulled up to the front door yeah it's i mean it's a really great looking space uh we really reduced the uh, square footage of, of the uh building Everything was based on return on investment for the owner. Yeah. He said, we want to be this type of return for them. This is what we think the rev par is. This is how much it's got to cost to build it. And that's what we did. And what is that, what's that outdoor space experience going to be like for people? So it's great. We, we actually built this uh, fireplace. It mm-hmm. goes indoor, outdoor fireplace. Yep. It's got great lighting. Um, and it'll be a nice space to sit outside and eat or, you know, or, or just to hang out at night. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Well, I love that um, you're so enthusiastic ab- about it. I love that you you came out. Then a, a competitor's brand came out with a with a, a a new prototype for one of their brands, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And I'm very energized and excited about where we're going to be headed from from here. But back to what you guys are on. You've got a lot of brands out there. How many is it? Now? 12, 13, <laughs> yeah, 13. Right. And any other updates you want to share about what's going on with the rest of the, uh, the organization? Well, and look, we know right now, um, you know, about 80% of what we did in the first quarter was conversions mm-hmm. uh, in regards to our new franchise sales. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, we launched Clarion Point two years ago, yep. which is, you know, there isn't too many upper, you know, upper mid-scale conversion brands that are out there. That's right. Uh, we just opened up our 30th Clarion Point. Nice, congratulations! Uh, yes, yeah. and it's so it's really going terrific. Uh, conversion, uh, so a really good conversion brands, quality in, um, and then obviously look, those brands are performing, mm-hmm. right? This and during this, it's right now we have the leisure travel. They're going to these type of assets and yep. economy segment, yep. you know, Lodge and Roadway. Uh, you know, these assets are they're performing up to 2019 levels already. Yeah, and um, let me say, I think one of um. My favorite brand is uh, Cambria. I've been there since, you know, I've been around long enough to have been there when you opened the first one. Oh. And I was blessed enough to be um, in Anaheim for the opening of the 50th one just before everything hit the wall and the yeah. fan, yeah. you know. Um, Your hair didn't have any gray. It, it, no, it, it had was, some, but it was, uh, <laughs> I was able to hide it. I don't know what but, happened. I totally forgot to get a haircut. And now I'm just totally grayed out. Yeah. No, Upscale is doing really well for us again. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's Ascend. We just hit our 200th. Uh, Ascend property. That's amazing. This is where I have to tell everybody they were the first soft brand ever to come out in the market. Don't let the other companies claim that. Don't let them claim that. Yeah. It is. It's these nice boutique or uh, Mm -hmm. you know independent hotels. They don't want a brand. They just want the. They first of all they want the reservation system. They want Mm -hmm. the marketing. They want the loyalty program. Right. What they no one ever really talks about is the cost savings. Right. You know, it's, it's, you know, our OTA partners, you know, we got better commission rate with, you know, so it can help them with lower their costs there. Uh, purchasing, buying bed spreads, buying soap, mm-hmm. buying shampoo, uh, you know, linens. You know, there's a lot of savings that go into I mean, can you imagine being an independent hotel and you have to go out and buy keyword buys versus all the other competitors no. that are out there? Right. You go right. broke. You can do those things. Mm-hmm. Or revenue management. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of interest for, especially these urban hotel, hotels that, they, look, they got hurt. They, yeah. they don't have the conventions back, right? And they don't have the international traveler back. So they're looking for help. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's why Ascend's really taking off right now. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are looking for that. So help. where are you at with uh, Cambria right now? Because you had such momentum. And my biggest worry is that, you know, you hit a big speed bump. No. Uh, I'll tell you, it's still going. We're still opening assets. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's such a great-looking product. Everyone yep. really loves it. And I'll tell you what happened also during this whole thing is, that, you know, we've gained so much RevPAR index share. Uh, that yeah. people are looking at, at Cambria. We're still opening hotels. I think we have 20 hotels that are under construction today. Uh, so we're still moving forward. I just love that you've really defined what that brand is, what it really wanted to, to be. So we're taking a look right now on your screen. That's uh, the new Comfort prototype, yes? Comfort, yep, and we have three different interiors, so it's not just one color scheme. Right. It really is going to fit whatever market you're in, and we have three different color palettes. For you that, that, that's, that's excellent. Uh, thanks for the picture, Suzanne. We appreciate that. So what else is going on with, with, with you guys? How have you really thought about reinventing yourselves to come out of this leaner, stronger, meaner, more successful? Yeah, look, uh, I, look we all had to go through, you know, uh, you know, layoffs. Of course, uh, you right. Know, we all had to go. And, uh, and so, but we didn't cut in the spaces that really helped the owner. Mm-hmm. Right. We're still we're still investing in global sales, trying to drive room nights. Yeah. You know, and look, we were lucky during the pandemic. We were the only ones that were answering the phone. 
Uh, yeah. And so we were we were able to get uh, a lot of business. So we're really focused again on this total cost of ownership for the owner, mm-hmm. trying to drive business to them. Yeah. Well, that's that. That's been really the way to that's, to, that's, to, that's to that's do the way it. it should be, right? How are you feeling about you know? Going forward, uh, yeah, uh, we can talk about all the industry numbers. I've always said that they're really irrelevant. It's such a street corner game. Fun to talk about, kind of like sports, but it doesn't really necessarily mean what it's going to be to your property. I'm hearing the, the stats people say 24, 25. I call BS on that. I think overall the number is going to be back way sooner than that. Again, great example of this conference. Yeah. 350. 350 yeah. people three right. weeks ago, 1100 today. Right. It's really. I think we're. I think it's going to be surprising a lot of people how quick this is coming back. Uh, it's not going to surprise me because but, I, right. You're. You're. See, you are the optimist. I am the optimist. And I've been saying throughout this whole thing, man, that it's going to come back. It'll come roaring back. Anthony, every day is it's going to be like the roaring twenties all over it, it again. Is, and, and I don't want to hear that business travel is not coming back. That's BS. Uh, it's total BS. And and it's you know people are like, well, but people aren't all going back to the office. Well, just because the tech guy that usually sits in a dark room anyway, is right. now working from home. And right. I'm still going to Apple to go have a meeting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's not like that's going to change anything about business travel. Right. And, you know, uh, you keep hearing, oh, well, you know, people are not going to travel for business. They're just going to get deals done on Zoom. Yeah, but one guy from one company is going to say, I want to go in person, and then every other company every, is going to have to, to follow. It's the same thing, too. When it, look, and, and don't get me wrong. I think business travel is not going to come fully back the way it was, but it's not going right. to be the, the, the destination that people talk about. What, what Bill Gates says about you know about uh, well, Bill travel. Gates is biased because he yeah. wants to sell teams. Right. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But it, it's it's now that we're all coming back into the office, and when there's a, everybody in a meeting room and you're on Zoom, you're going to want to be in that meeting. Yeah, hmm. yeah, I, I agree with you. So I got we got some good news that I just saw on LinkedIn before we went on air. Um, MGM Resorts' Las Vegas Strip Casino is approved for full capacity with no social distancing, distancing restrictions, right? Now, I don't want to get into talking about Vegas, how awesome Vegas is, but this is very symbolic, I think, of where we're headed. How do you react to, to hearing that? I, I, I think it's great. Yeah. You know, look, I don't want to be the hotel guy, like, oh, everything's going to be great for the hotel stuff. It's great. It really, that is great to hear. Yeah. Um, and it, it does show people are coming back. People are getting vaccinated. Please go get your vaccination. Yes. Um, and uh, and it's it, when you do, when we can get to this herd community. People are dying to see each other, and people are mm-hmm. dying to go out and do those experiences. That's you know, people were you know were done buying just products. They That's right. wanted the experiences, and they're going to get back out. And do which it which just brings us back to uh, all the crazy uh, hugging that we uh, that we saw <laughs> exactly. yesterday, <laughs> right? I mean, it was so. It went uh, quick. It went quick from elbow bumping to to hugging. It was so. Nice. And all the hugs were like, really, you know, I've said family reunion at the beginning, like long lost friends. Usually it's like, pat, pat, hey, but this was like, bring it in, yeah, yeah. Cool. you know, Great let's hug it out you. kind Great of a thing. You. Yeah. Uh, it's been a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been enough. Yeah, it has been enough. Um, uh, Anything else that you want to talk about today? Uh, other than that, uh, where are you going to next? Uh, I am... St- Joke, David. I'm going to be home for a few weeks, getting ready for the summer season, but uh, we've gotten invited to the opening of Resorts World in Las Vegas. So we're going to do a whole week of shows in Vegas. We're going to go to the Virgin. We're going to go to a couple of other properties and then wind up in uh, Resorts World for the grand opening. And then I hope to do my Friday night audit show the day after from the poolside. I think that'll be freaking cool. I'll That's be at awesome. Alice in July. I know you'll be there. I'll be there right next year. Ahoa in August. Yep. You got lodging, lodging conference. conference. You got NYU coming. Yep. New York's finally opening up. Yep. I mean, that was our big fear, which is the, these cities where they're going to open things up. Yeah. Love hearing what's well, going uh, on. Well, David, I was, um, we did a couple of shows from uh, the Mark Hotel in New York City last week, I think it was. God, the days are really uh, blending together. And I stayed at... Um, I had to stay elsewhere because the Mark Hotel was so busy they couldn't accommodate me, right? So uh, fortunately, we made some friends with the f- good folks over at the Marriott Marquis, and I got they they hooked me up over there. And walking around Times Square, yeah. it Come just on. felt back, yeah. back. And um, uh, b- believe it or not, now that uh, now that something was uh, legalized, everybody was uh, hanging out and partying in uh, <laughs> Times Square as, as well. Doing Smell that. it everywhere. Yeah, you, but you did beforehand. Like you can never walk down the streets without seeing it. But now everybody is like, uh, "Hey, right. now, now let's let's do it. Let's right. have some fun." Um, everybody wants to find you, David. How could we? Uh, how could we learn more about uh, Choice Hotels? I know you got to go to ChoiceHotelsDevelopment dot com, right? ChoiceHotelsDevelopment dot com. ChoiceHotels dot com. Come see us. Uh, we love to talk. There's look, things are happening. 
Yep. Things are happening. Hotels are for sale. Hotel valuations are coming back. Uh, lending's opening up, uh, and uh, and the business is coming back too. So. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. You going on a family vacation this summer? Uh, yeah, I just got back. We uh, we did uh, spring break in Park City. Oh, good Utah, for you. Uh, which was great. Of course, my daughter fractured her arm on a second day. Oh, Unbelievable, no. though. In, in 20 minutes, we saw three fractures and, yeah. and, a, uh, and a blown out knee while, we, while she was getting... Uh, Holy her, cow. Yeah. Well, this is why I don't go to uh, ski resorts. Yeah. I, I would be dead, <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, no. And then uh, yeah, yeah, look, my kids are going back to camp this yeah. summer. So, That's you know, awesome. So things are back. And it's, it, it's so great for them. It's so yeah. great for everybody. You know, yeah. get your kids back out. They got to get. They they they've been stuck inside for for way too long. Uh, yeah, I'm a little worried from the parenting side that they've just you know become attached to their computers, and it's gonna be very difficult right. to get them so to be mainstream. Now these camps are opening up. Like get them out. Yeah, get I know. Yeah, believe it or not, my kids are 17 now, so I think I got to get them a job this summer. Maybe uh, hey folks over at Uncle Giuseppe's, uh, hire yeah. my kids. Right. You know, yeah, yeah well, mine's uh, mine's still a 12 year old and a 14. year old Yeah, so they're they're almost up. Yeah, that must have been much harder on you with them at home. For for me with the kids at home, they were happy to be there. It worked out okay for them generally speaking. Yeah, no, my kids, it was great. Look, the whole family thing was it was amazing. It was right? definitely an unexpected blessing to this whole thing. Look, you know how much you and I travel. Yeah. I mean, to, for me to be home, it was great to be with my wife, Jeanette, mm-hmm. the whole you know for a year. Um, you know, to help out and actually get the kids from school yep. or, or, or to get them a hockey yep. practice or things like that. Yeah. Uh, so I enjoyed it. Um, but, you know, now it's tough. Yeah, now I felt tough. like I felt like a real dad instead of a divorced dad who comes yeah. in on the weekends. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, it was nice. It was, <laughs> when my son says, another family dinner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I took it as a badge of honor. Yeah, absolutely. We made that a real centerpiece of our, our last year. Yeah. And um, I, I cook dinner every night. We get together and we have a real meaningful time with each other before they vanish on the computers again. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Choice Hotels Development. David, so great to see you great here to see today. You, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, I can't wait to get back on the road and get back to our old, old way of doing things. But better, leaner, meaner. More opportunities out there are going to happen than ever before. It's just a matter for all of you guys to recognize that and take advantage of it. All right, everybody, remember, sign up to our newsletter, text the word hotel to 66866. Follow us on, please subscribe to YouTube. I'm trying to build that thing, right? That would be really helpful. Again, great views on LinkedIn, great views on Facebook, but let's make this YouTube thing happen as well. All right, everybody, take care of yourself. Remember, you've only got one life, so blaze on. And as Anthony would say, take care of yourself. We'll see you tomorrow.